Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you. Now we are in the month of June, and today is Friday. Praise God. Hey, God has a special, special plan for us this month. Like I told you yesterday, the Lord says it is time to begin to enter into His rest. Now, rest, what does that rest mean? Is a series of teaching I'm going to start giving from Monday. But I want you to understand something. But before going to today's broadcast, can we call forth our daily bread? Are you ready? And this is a new month. So listen, keep your mind on increase. Praise mm -hmm. God. Everything around you must increase. I hear everything. Everything around you must increase. Praise God. So join me right now in faith and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. And I ask for an increased portion. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now I'm sharing something with you yesterday about uh, the nation because see I receive calls and and sometimes when things happen like this you know a lot of things begin to run through your mind now here's the truth God spoke about our nation God has been speaking about our nation not just today for many years God's been speaking about our nation and at every four-year season, we expect that maybe this is the time. And sometimes we judge by physical things that we have seen. See, but we must grow in understanding and learning. Like the scripture I shared with you yesterday in Acts chapter 1 and verse 7, Jesus clearly stated it. It is not for you to know the times and seasons the Father has kept in his own authority. Is Nigeria going to change for good? Yes. Why? Because God said it. Oh, when? Uh -huh. Now we're entering into the things that the Father has kept in his own authority. But Jesus gave us a comforting word. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you will be a witness what does it mean be a witness? The church have, and, and the evangelicals have limited that word being a witness to being preachers of the gospel and, and healing the sick and doing all those things. As fantastic as that is, being a witness is far, is broad, so broad, <laughs> praise God. Yeah, that's the truth. Being a witness means representing everything Jesus represented living out everything Jesus stood for. That's what it means to be a witness. Praise God. So if Jesus knows things, then by the Holy Ghost in us, we will know things. You see that? Now, even the time the Father has kept in his power, a time will come when the Father will decide to release it. See that now? I'll cite some examples for you in scriptures. Why am I sharing this with you? Don't think. Now, you know, um, there, are, there are some people that believers now who are now beginning to wonder if they can still believe their pastors. Oh, my pastor prophesied that this is going to happen. Oh, we prayed as a church that this one will not happen or this will happen. How come? Is it that God did not hear? Is it that now? So your faith is wondering. Does God still hear prayers? Does God still answer prayers? Does my pastor still hear right? Now, you don't use one prophecy to judge whether your pastor hear right or wrong. So also the fact that someone prophesied something and it came to pass now means the person is a true prophet. See, that's the mistake people make. You don't. How you judge a prophet, whether he's true or false, is his character and the consistency of his message. That's how you judge. If his message is not consistent, then he's an unstable person. 
See, I told you yesterday, the realm of the spirit is open. Anybody can look into the realm of the spirit. If you have the ability to look into it. Now, there are certain things that you can do, even if you're not born again. There are certain things you can do that will open your understanding to the realm of the spirit. If you choose to start fasting a lot and meditating a lot, you don't have to know Jesus Christ. One day you will contact something that will take you in as a vehicle into the realm of the spirit. The problem with that is they always, and this is, this is where um, fortune tellers, witch doctors, or what we call them native doctors here. Now, when I say native, I don't, I don't talk about the ones that are the, those who deal with herbs, but then there are witch doctors that you know what I'm talking about. Now, here is where the problem is. The fact that somebody gave a prophecy that came to pass, you start flocking around that person, oh, this person is a genuine person. This person. Now you begin to take every word he says as it is. Now that's where the problem is. Before you commit yourself to anybody. Now, truth is you're supposed to be following Jesus Christ as a person. As an individual, you're supposed to be following Jesus Christ. So when men make mistakes, it doesn't affect you much. Rather, you can stand and help them stand. See that now? But you see, you must judge the person's character. Does he live the life that befits uh, a, a Christian, first of all? Not because he prophesied something and it came to pass. Anything now he does. He, ah, no, he's a prophet of God. Though. You know, if his life is not consistent with the gospel, if he's not showing an example of a believer according to the scriptures then that person you should be afraid of him so the fact that he said something and it didn't come to pass doesn't disqualify him as a prophet even the scriptures paul told us when he was talking about love he says even prophecy will fail paul said it he didn't say lying prophecy will fail he says prophecy will fail but there's one thing that must be constant in us, and that is the love of God in our hearts. Now, that's one of the things the Holy Spirit is in us to bear witness to. What is that? The love of God, the consistent love of God in our hearts. Now, why will people get angry? Because I know how the devil tricks people. Even as a minister of the gospel, you have to be careful in this season. Because unconsciously, you will not know when your heart begins to uh, walk in unbelief. Yes, you will know. And, and some, you, you will just begin to think that, well, maybe God has disappointed us. And then you will begin to hear voices. Just go and do one, commit one sin. Just do something wrong. After all, what is it? I'm telling you, those thoughts will come. Guard your heart with all diligence because you still have a long life to live. Praise God. You still have fulfilling lots, lots, and lots of prophecies to fulfill. You see that? Have this understanding. We are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. And I'll tell you, even this period, God is doing a saving of the church. He's doing a saving of the church. So, as a, as a, as a prophet of God, don't let this discourage you. If you're a true prophet of God that have heard the voice, why you knew you heard God's voice. Relax. I told you yesterday, let patience have a perfect work in you. If you're a child of God who believes in a prophet, don't use this to say, hey, maybe next time. No. You as a person must have your own personal conviction to every prophecy that whoever gives. You understand what I'm saying? Encourage your pastors as long as their character is consistent. And if someone's character is not consistent with the gospel, what business do you even have being under such a person? You will catch that negative spirit eventually. So flee from that place. You have not, you have not been tied to be in that kind of a place. So you can flee. Praise God. So Jesus said, the times the Father have kept in his own authority is not for us to know. Now, let me give you some instance in scriptures to help you. Now, you remember when God was speaking to Abraham. And as at that time, Abraham did not have a son. And Abraham went before the Lord and said, how will I know 
And God spoke to him and said, your children will be in a foreign land and they'll be there and they'll be tormented for 400 years. And God says, after 400 years, I will visit them and I'll bring them out. Now, you want to ask this question. Who sinned that they went into that bondage for 400 and 400 plus years? Who sinned? Was it Abraham? Was it the children of Israel? That they were not even born. God speaking of their future spoke of bondage. Now, they got into Egypt. There is nothing anybody could have done about it while they were in Egypt until 400 years pass. Are you following me? There was no prophecy, no prayer that would have brought them out until after 400 years. Now that's because God spoke that 400 years according to his wisdom. Now, imagine those who were following the prophecy, imagine it was known as at that time that this is what God have said. So people were monitoring the prophecy, yeah, 100 years, 200 years. When it got to exactly 400 years, they will begin to declare, oh, this is the time, this is the time, this is the time, this is the time. And then they wait and nothing happens. 401, 402, 410, 420, until 430 years. Now, when the time came, God by himself, not because Moses was at the backside of the desert, living as a prophet and, and waiting to hear God. He, 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 everyone has moved on. Everybody was living their life. Moses was keeping the sheep of, of, of his father-in-law. And God showed up. He does not forget his word. You remember Israel also. God spoke to Jeremiah and said, they will be in captivity for 70 years. Now, that particular one, God sent the warning and gave them an opportunity to repent. And God said, if they don't repent, they're going to be in captivity for 70 years. Now, they did not repent. And so, the time of captivity came. Now, even when Daniel realized it, because now, now you, we read these things today and we're like, wow, but forget the fact that, you, we forget the fact that in their day, they didn't have these records on their fingertips. So Daniel was a wise, one of the wisest people that, 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 uh, that, that belonged to Israel. He didn't know until one day he had the time to be studying Jeremiah's prophecy. And he found out that this captivity they are in, God has spoken it, that it's gonna last for 70 years. And when Daniel found out, Daniel went and began to pray. Now, of course he was praying. He knew it was because of sin that they entered. So he began to pray and repent before God, hoping that God would change his mind. But you see, it would have been easy for God to change his mind before they entered the captivity. But the moment they enter the captivity and they have spent a few years in that captivity, then they will have to do the 70 years. If they don't do the 70 years and God delivers them, you see, why did God say 70? There's a reason. And that they are being in captivity was tied, go study the scriptures, was tied to the judgment of Babylon. God needed captivity for 70 years so that Babylon would be judged. So when Daniel prayed, there was no way God could reverse it because God reversing it will mean that they will start afresh again for another 70 years, another time. Now, this is how the wisdom of God works. But most times we just think of our own path. I want freedom. I want freedom. It's like asking today, Lord, because I'll tell you this truth, God has spoken. Nigeria will be a great nation among the nations of the earth. That's number one. Number two, the sign that that season has come is the day God will put an anointed man on the seats of that throne. You see that now? 
but the time and season specifically is in his authority. Now, when Daniel prayed, God visited him and began to tell him things about the future. But God didn't tell him specifically that this is what's going to happen to your nation now. No. And when God began to reveal to Daniel about the 70 weeks, now God spoke in parables. God says 70 weeks. Now today we use that because it has been fulfilled. So a part of it has been fulfilled. So we use that to now understand, oh, God didn't mean 70 weeks. He meant 70 years. See that now? Now, that's at the end of it, after the fulfillment. We're looking back now. We saw that God was right. It is our calculation that was wrong. And that's how these things are. Most times when prophecy is given at the beginning, there is a high tendency that you will misjudge the prophecy by your inaccurate uh, interpretation. But if you will just be patient, patient doing what? Celebrating God, doing what God wants us to do, being in the place where God wants you to be. When the prophecy is fulfilled, you will look back and you are the one that will say, oh, God was actually right. He actually said it. We were the ones that misinterpreted it. Are you following me? So be patient. Be patient. While you're patient, pray for the government that is sitting on that place now. Pray that they will do well. Every minute that they will spend on that throne, let it be for the right purpose. Let God, the Spirit of God, rest upon them to succeed. Every minute they will be on that seat. Because if they succeed, then we all move forward. But if we pray against them not to succeed, it will affect all of us negatively. Two ways, physically and spiritually. Spiritually, because we are going against God's authority, which will take us into another season of slavery. Physically, because if their actions are wrong, they will feel the effect immediately. So pray for them. That is part of patience. Give the best attitude every day. Give the best attitude towards government. When you speak, speak right. When you speak negatively, those negative words are coming from your heart. So it is your heart that has the factory to produce negative things. Why don't you maintain a perfect heart that will always speak right words? Remember, we're entering a season of rest. God has said it. It is true. His anointing is resting upon us. And His teachings will bring us into that place of rest. Believe me, you are going to experience rest all around your life. You're going to experience rest in your finances. You're going to experience rest in your health. You're going to experience, even in our nation, Nigeria, we will experience rest. Praise God. And that's what God is saying for this season. Relax. God is in charge. Nothing is spoiled yet. And God's word will surely come to pass. Praise God. I love you very much. And I pray for you every day that the Spirit of God will continue to guide you and bring you to the place that he has ordained for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful weekend. And don't miss next week. From Monday, I'll begin to teach you about what God is saying about the rest that He has promised us this month of June. I'll see you Monday. Bye.